Hello everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Today is actually Sunday, August 27th, 2023, and this is going to be a short mini course on how you can work on targeting your snake out of their enclosure and habituating them to a station all in the same training session. There are some prerequisites for both you and your snake before you can start this particular type of training. So do not start this training session if you and your snake don't meet the following criteria. For you, you are not in a hurry and you have no time limit before you're gonna start a session like this. And you are in the mood to be patient and you are able to dedicate as much time is as needed to do this exercise. This is a long exercise, and this is going to be a session that's not quick, and you need to allow as much time as is necessary. So this is nothing that you're gonna do if you have a time limit, you have a deadline, you're in a hurry. This is something you do when you're relaxed and have all night or all day, and your snake is comfortable and relaxed. The prerequisites for your snake are that the snake is familiar with visually seeing the station that's gonna be used. They, they don't have to have interacted with it physically before or used it before, but they need to be used to seeing it outside of their enclosure and be used to seeing it in the environment. And they need to be proficient at targeting while inside of their enclosure and also to or partially out the door. And if you and your snake meet all of these prerequisites, you can go ahead and start this type of training. So this process may vary depending on the species of snake and the individual learner, of course. The time and number of sessions, the entire process is going to take is going to be dependent on the learner. Like, are they a colubrid, which is very fast moving and fast thinking? Are they a royal python? Are they a boa constrictor? Also, the amount of supervision and containment necessary is going to be dependent on the individual learner. So a corn snake, a king snake, a false water cobra, <laughs> that level of supervision needed during the training is going to be much different than if it's a boa constrictor, for example. And the amount of time the snake takes during an individual session to practice this behavior, to target out the door, to explore the station may be faster or may take more time than what I'm demonstrating here. All right, so let's get started. This is going to be a step-by-step -step walkthrough of a session using targeting to actively habituate a snake to a station and then following that to allow the snake to do some passive habituation to the station. Now, I have not just filmed straight through because it was several hours that this session took. So I'm going to go through the steps and I'm going to show you just a few seconds of video of each step. Step one is when the snake is naturally awake, active, alert, and visible, that's when you start. You're gonna choose a station the snake is already used to seeing as part of the environment outside of their enclosure. So it shouldn't be something that's new to them. You wanna place the station adjacent to the enclosure and leave it there for a few minutes. You can do that with the door open or closed, it doesn't matter. And then you're gonna prepare your training equipment and your reinforcer. So you're gonna get your target, you're going to thaw the food or get your reinforcer. You're going to get the environment completely set up along with anything that you're going to need to do the target training session. This video is an example of me having set the station adjacent to the enclosure and open the door. And then I leave for a little while and I just let Phoenix look at the station. She started moving towards it and, and towards her door, as you could see. But this is just all happening while I am getting the reinforcement ready, which in this case is going to be food, and while I'm getting her individual target ready, and I'm making sure that I have the tongs I need and that I am mentally and physically prepared to start this session to ensure her success. The targets that you see on the station are not her targets. They're not the same color as the target she uses, and one of them is not even the same shape as a target she uses. So those are nothing to her. Those are stimuli that don't mean anything to her. They're just neutral to her. They're there. 
they're part of the station, they aren't signaling anything. All right, step two. So the snake is still visible and alert and has not retreated from the station. After you've left it there for a little while and you have all of your equipment ready and you're ready to start your formal target training session. What you're gonna do next is target the snake who should already be following the target within their enclosure to the door of the enclosure or to the enclosure threshold. You're gonna target that snake partially out their door and in the direction of the station. Then you're gonna reinforce the snake for targeting in the direction of the station, for being next to the station, or for touching the station. Any of those things, any type of interaction with the station or movement in the direction of the station, you're gonna reinforce. Now let's take a look at step two, where I've presented the target. Notice how much more quickly Phoenix moves now. She recognizes the target and now she's moving much more confidently, fluently, and quickly in the direction of the station, really in the direction of her enclosure threshold, which she's done many times. But once she gets there, she becomes a little bit distracted, likely looking for the food to be presented because this is where I've reinforced her before. So she's looking left before she had looked down. So in order to proof that she is paying attention to and acknowledging the target, I am moving the target to her right. I'm looking for her head to turn towards the target, which it did. And so now I'm moving the target over the station to ask her to come towards the station. She's tongue flicking at the station. She's moving in the direction of the station. I'm watching her entire body and it is moving forward. So this is all great. Now, as she gets her face to the station, and remember this is new to her, I have to gauge when to deliver the reinforcement. I saw her start to hesitate and slow down a bit. And this was a big step since she hasn't targeted onto the station before. So I thought that this was a good approximation to go ahead and reinforce because I don't wanna push her too far that she gives up and goes away. Okay, step three. This is where you're gonna leave the station where it is. You're gonna leave the snake where they are. You're just gonna let them eat right there where they're at. If the snake takes the food into their enclosure with them, that is fine. You're still going to leave the station where it is. You're going to leave the enclosure door open. You're going to leave the snake alone. So leave the enclosure open, leave the station adjacent to it while the snake eats, and you want to remain nearby to observe what's happening, but don't interfere with what's happening. This is a video of me just demonstrating what I just told you. Uh, there's Phoenix eating just outside of her enclosure, and I'm just going to leave the station rolled up adjacent to it. I'm not going to take the station away. I move the station to show you, but I'm putting the station right back. The station is on wheels and we're going to leave it there while she finishes eating. And then we're going to see what she chooses to do next. Now, all we're going to do is let Phoenix eat her food and we're going to leave her alone. We're not going to do anything other than observe her behavior. She is choosing to remain outside of her enclosure threshold while she eats. I'm leaving the station there. I'm not changing anything. I'm allowing her to choose how and where she wants to eat. And we're just gonna leave her be. And what we're really waiting for is to observe her behavior after she has finished eating. Now let's take a look at what Phoenix does after she finishes eating. And this is really what's important for our passive habituation process. What does Phoenix choose to do? Well, she's gonna do some typical post feeding behaviors like yawn, readjust her jaws, make some body undulations to help move the food down to her stomach, rub her face on things to readjust jaws or to rub off any substrate that she may have gotten on her mouth or any remnants of the prey that she may have gotten on her mouth. But what we really want to see is how does she choose to interact with the station or not after she finishes eating? Does she put herself immediately away back in her enclosure? Or does she come out of her enclosure? Does she choose now to investigate that station further? And we're just gonna let this process naturally happen. We're gonna leave her here as long as she chooses to be halfway in and halfway out. Or if she chooses to go in and she shows no signs of coming out after a while, we'll clean everything up. If she chooses to come out and she's interacting with the station, we're gonna allow her to do that for as long as she wants to. And we are just observers now letting her passively habituate to the station. And the difference between active and passive habituation is this. We were actively habituating her when we were an active participant in what was going on. We targeted her out of the enclosure towards the station. That is actively prompting her to come out towards the station. 
but now we are allowing her to just passively habituate to the environment in her own time. In other words, now she's free to interact with the station and this environment around her in whatever manner she pleases and take however long she wants to do that. And now we're not interfering. So everything she does, while it's an activity for her, we're being passive and we are just standing back and we're letting her be. Okay, now step four. This is just allowing the snake to investigate. This could take a few minutes. This could take hours. So this is the part where you just have to be really patient. Now you are moving from active to passive habituation, which I just explained. Once the snake's finished eating, you're gonna leave everything in place for a few minutes or a few hours. You're gonna remain nearby to monitor the snake, but you're not gonna interfere unless you need to for safety reasons. And you are just gonna allow the snake to investigate the station on their own and come in and out of their enclosure several times, approach and retreat. You're gonna just let them do whatever they want. And as long as they're moving around, going in and out of their enclosure and still interacting with the environment that you've set up, you're gonna allow this to go on. Here's a few seconds of video showing what that looks like. And remember, time's passing here. I'm just taking a few seconds of video for you guys to see each of these steps. There's other snakes nearby watching what's going on. I think this is a good thing because this is Romana. She has watched the target training session. She can see the station. So she's watching what's going on from up there. Fulcrum over here is watching what's going on. And this is good for them. This is a form of passive habituation for these two snakes too, because they're getting used to me and my behavior. They're getting used to seeing all of the equipment that I'm using with Phoenix and they may be able to see a little bit of what Phoenix is doing. They can certainly see Phoenix when she's out of her enclosure and on that station. Now, the station is a little bit wet from the rodent. I thaw them in warm water, and so that's what you're seeing on the station. I haven't scented it deliberately with anything. So now she's choosing of her own accord to move out onto the station and interact with it very slowly. Again, the speed at which the snake does this may depend on their species and their individual level of confidence. This is video of her exploring further. Time has passed. I'm doing other things. I'm not just sitting here watching her the entire time. But if it was a different species that moved more quickly and that I was worried about getting away, then I would be watching them very closely and I wouldn't be walking away. But for her, you see the speed she's moving. You see how cautiously she's investigating. I'm able to go and do other things. Like I can work on chores. I can do office work. I can use my computer. I can do cleaning and other chores in this room to where I'm keeping an eye on her and periodically checking in with her, but I don't have to be hovering right above her the entire time. With some species, you may have to do that. And with other species, they might not move even as fast as she is. And so don't give up. If they are just sitting at their enclosure threshold or they rest their face on the station and they're not moving forward anymore, that doesn't mean in the session. It means just give them more time, do some chores, do some work, read a book, watch a TV show, and check in with the snake periodically as needed. Now in this video, you're seeing Phoenix going back into her enclosure. Notice that her other door is closed. So does this mean that she's finished? It doesn't necessarily mean that. The snakes tend to go in and out of their enclosure several times when they are investigating a station for the first time and you need to let, allow this process to happen. So I'm not gonna assume because she goes in the enclosure once that she's ready to be put up. I'm gonna allow her to come and go as she pleases, as many times as she pleases, until I'm satisfied that she's gone in the enclosure and she isn't likely coming out again. Let's take a look at this video and you'll notice now that I've opened the other door. So now she has both enclosure doors open, the station's still there, and now she has even more options for how she can come and go and interact with this station. So now she's realized the other door's open and she's checking that out. And I'm just letting her be. I'm letting her tongue flick, I'm letting her go in and out. Now you notice that it's not her face and neck on the station, she's got her whole body on the station. So at some point during her exploration she moved completely out of her enclosure and onto the station i don't remember how much time she spent on it and then she turned around and she realized oh the other door's open 
Uh, she sticks her face in and tongue flicks. I thought maybe she was going to go back in, but she decides, nope, I'm going to stay out. And that's all that's happening during this process is you're just letting them go in and out, tongue flick, investigate, move around the enclosure and the station as much as they want for as long as they want until it's clear that they're finished. Now she's just resting her face on the door. She's not really even moving. So what does this mean? It means you leave them alone and you let her do what she's going to do. You want to look for very substantial behavior that indicates clearly she either wants to continue or she wants to be done. And her resting halfway in her enclosure and halfway out of her enclosure is not substantial behavior that tells you one or the other. It tells you to wait. That's your clue to just pause give her time to let you know what she's going to do next. And again, I want to be emphasize they may go in and out of their enclosure multiple times before they decide that they are finished. And she did that a lot. She sort of went back in her enclosure and came out several times while I was checking in with her. But mostly what she did was she would partially go in her enclosure and then she would come back out while her body is solidly on that station. This is passive habituation. This is allowing the animal without your interference, other than the natural observer effect. An observer effect is you're there. And so if you're present and they see you, your presence may be impacting their behavior, but you're not deliberately impacting the behavior other than observing. You're just allowing her to interact with this environmental setup in whatever way that she wants, as long as it's safe. So that means she may just rest and not move. It may mean that she goes in and out. And she might change her mind several times as to whether she wants to be in or out. And you just want to let the process happen, which is why I emphasized in the beginning, don't start a session like this unless you have the time to give her or give him, give your snake, give your animal, be patient. And I think that you should have something else to do, like read a book, use your computer, make a phone call, do dishes, do chores in the room, whatever have something else to do while your snake is engaging in this process. All right, step five, you're gonna allow the snake to put itself away. You're not gonna force them back into their enclosure for this particular training exercise. There may be other times when you have to put the snake away and you give them a signal that you're gonna to touch them and pick them up and that they're gonna be put away and they can't opt out. That is not what you're gonna do during this session. If you're deliberately doing this type of session, you want to be able to allow as much time as is necessary to allow the snake to decide when they want to go back into their enclosure and in the training exercise. If the snake wanders off the station, you want to use considerate handling to place them back onto the station, but do not place them back into the enclosure. This is a case where you want that decision to go back into the enclosure to be the snake's decision. So if you have to redirect them, if you have to pick them up because they've left the station, you want to put them back on the station. So the only options you're giving them really are to interact with the station or to go back in their enclosure or go in and out of their enclosure between the enclosure and the station, not to go anywhere else. And that's because the goal behavior is to teach them to shift from their enclosure to the station and back. So when the snake is finished exploring and has gone back into their enclosure on their own and they haven't come back out, it's clear that they're done. Then you want to go ahead and close the doors and clean up your training area. So here is a video showing that Phoenix has gone back into her enclosure and she's been there for quite a while like that. She never ended up coming back out. She is hanging out the door, so I'm not going to close the door right away. But I'm going to go ahead and move the station because a lot of time passed and she didn't come back out. You can see that it's dark now. It's later at night. I actually think this is after midnight now. It's morning. I started this in the evening, and now we're in the wee hours of the night slash morning the next day. So more house lights have gone out, and we're winding down the activity in the room. So I went ahead and shut the door that I was able to shut with her being in the position that she was in. But I'm not shutting her other door because she is still outside of the enclosure threshold and I'm not gonna force her back in. Now she's put her face inside and she's looking out the window of the other door. And so I'm still not gonna close the door on her because she's still looking out and she's still sticking her face in and out. 
So I'm just going to wait even longer now. I'm just going to let her be on the enclosure threshold and look outside and I'm going to do what I need to do in the room. I have always things to keep me busy, so it's no problem. She can stay like this as long as she needs to. And then she has now gone almost completely back in the enclosure. And I don't know that you can see it when I start this video, but she has her face and neck inside of the enclosure on that purple holy roller ball. So now that I see that she's faced away from the doors and she's got her head and neck towards the middle of her enclosure, I'm going to shut this door. And it didn't even knock her off the little door edge she was on. So this interfered with her very, very little. And you can see that she's on her holy roller ball faced away from the doors. She's actually headed towards her hides. And so this was a, a time that I thought was a good time to end the session. She was physically back inside of her enclosure. I was able to close the door without interfering with what she was doing inside of the enclosure. And it had been a very long time since she had stuck her head out or brought any part of her body out. So that's a clue to me. Okay, time to end the session. All right, so if you stuck with me during all of those steps, well done. If you've done this with your own snake, well done done. As you can see, this type of training session takes time and patience. So this is nothing that you should decide to do spur of the moment. And when you know that you can't dedicate as many hours to it as you might need, you may not always need hours. Some snakes may do this and be done within just a few minutes and others may take hours to, to do this, to complete this process uh, and decide that they're ready to go back into their enclosure and rest. I have had snakes just target towards the station, interact with the station for just a few minutes after eating and then go right back into their enclosure and are clearly done. So it's really gonna depend on the individual learner as to how long this takes. All right, so now you've done this, what should your next session look like? You're gonna start the session the same way. You're gonna see if the snake will target closer to or all the way onto the station. So each time you do a session like this, your goal is to get the snake closer and closer to the station, and you're going to reinforce the closest approximation to your end goal, which is being on the station, which is completely shifting out and onto the station. So each session reinforce closer approximations until the snake is targeting out and onto the station or shifting out and onto the station on their own. What does that mean? It means that sometimes the snake bypasses the whole targeting part of the session when they realize what the station means, you open the door, you set the station there, they just shift out onto the station and you haven't even started a formal target training session yet. So if the snake shifts out onto the station by themselves on their own before you've even started targeting, that is fine. Just go ahead and reinforce that. You can reinforce that with or without the target, meaning you can reinforce them with food just for moving out onto the station and what you're really reinforcing in this case is the station as a target. Now the station has become a second target to them. And when you roll the station up and you open the door, now they just see the whole station as a target and they move out onto it and you reinforce that. You can reinforce that with food or you can reinforce it with just the experience itself if the snake enjoys the experience of exploring the station. Or you can reinforce it by taking the station to another location, like an exercise tent, or another location like an exercise tree, or um, a swimming pool with substrate in it, if you have a terrestrial snake that likes to burrow. But you can move that station to another activity the snake finds reinforcing. But you want to reinforce them moving on to the station. Or once they're on the station, if you want to solidify your targeting, you can now target them to move their head left or right, or to go up or down, or go ahead and target them a little distance on the station and then reinforce with food. Eventually, way further down the road, you're gonna target them back into their enclosure from the station and you're gonna reinforce them by going back into the enclosure. So the whole behavior is you get them to target out onto the station and you reinforce that, or you get them to target just the station and move out onto the station on their own and you reinforce that. And then eventually 
whether they've been in an exercise area or they've just been right there adjacent to their enclosure on the station, you want to use your target training to get them back into their enclosure. And so you're going to show them the target and have them shift from the station back into their habitat and reinforce that. But that is another shaping plan. So once they're targeting out or shifting out onto the station, then you're going to start shaping, shifting them back into their habitat with the target. And that's the same process, just in reverse. So thank you very much for watching and for spending time to learn with me today. Be sure to contact me if you have questions. You can do that through my website at behavioreducation.org, or you can email me at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com or message me on Instagram or Facebook. And if you want to do more training, more learning, you want private or group coaching, consider becoming a patron. We have a very active Patreon community. It is an educational platform. And you can find me on patreon.com slash behavior education. Please remember to always be kind and love your animals.